there's an issue in the world that I want to talk about. And I think this issue is a big problem and other people might not. And I also think that this issue has been talked about to death before. But I don't feel like it's been talked about in a way that might actually solve the problem. The problem is how we criticize early access games. And I'm not excluding myself to just talking about the Steam Early Access program here. I'm talking about the whole practice of selling incomplete versions of games for profit before they have reached a stage that the developers consider complete. The very concept of Early Access isn't what's causing problems. There are lots of games that have done it right, that have released large and exhaustive and polished versions that treat their customers respectfully, but there are a lot more games that use this system to turn the whole project into a problem. Games like Towns, which peaked in early access sales long before development completed. The original developer has refused to invest his millions towards new staff to complete the game, and the project has recently ceased development altogether. Or games like Paranautical Activity, which is going to release complete without the advertised multiplayer features that were used to drive sales of the game during the early access period. Or games like Earth 2066, which had released itself under the early access banner using stolen artwork, prefab assets, and an empty map with little to no original content or features at all. Now, I have a disclaimer to make here. I have not played these games, so I may be talking out of my ass, and that's because I have a personal policy of never buying early access games. I learned my lesson years ago, after being burned not once, but twice by early access purchases. There were games with great potential that could have been incredible experiences, but ended up being ditched projects or got caught in an eternal development hell. Disappointment is never worth the investment, so it's with that attitude in mind that I'm saying that early access games need more criticism. But there already is a lot of criticism towards early access. Whenever something embarrassing lands on PC, Total Biscuit will tear it apart. Jim Sterling orchestrated the removal of Year 2066 from Steam, and even Yahtzee has taken a few jabs at popular early access games, but that's not the kind of criticism that I want to see. I want to see these things have reviews. I want to see them have legit, professional game journalism reviews that resemble the same reviews that completed projects get. Because if we begin to see that, then we can begin to see higher community standards for these things. Right now, it looks like Polygon is the only publication that has the guts to slap a number on an early access game. GameSpot and Eurogamer also write early access reviews, but they don't give them scores. The Escapist, IGN, and Giant Bomb, on the other hand, don't review early access at all. DayZ and Starbound don't have Metacritic scores without those reviews, and also because Metacritic only accepts one score per publication. But they have surely sold millions by now, they have exchanged a product of some generalized quality for people's money, in the same way that a complete game does. But the same ecosystem of big game sites applying review scores onto new releases does not apply to these new releases. Standards for them are incredibly low, and I think that is going to be a serious problem as more developers figure out how to exploit that lack of criticism. We might not like to admit it, but review scores are a useful metric of quality for a common site reader who doesn't have the time, patience, desire, or aptitude to read an entire video game review. Like it or not, those people exist, and they are the ones that drive game sales. Compared to music and movies, there is a bit of a correlation between a game's average review score and its sales, and that means that on some level, those scores are working as intended. I've never made a review of an early access game, but Sir You Are Being Hunted was the closest I ever came. Sir has been sold through early access since last August, but a final 1.0 version of it came out in May, so it should be fair game for review, right? But after making my review of it, someone said this. Judging a game that has only just become a full release this harshly, I thought better of you, George. A lot better. I need to get out of here. It reads as if for this commenter, for the few seconds he was writing it, 
finality had become tenuous. After months of availability, the game's final quality was so unpredictable that it wasn't ready to be judged even after it said it was final and ready to be judged. The differences between the ethics of judging an early access game versus a completed game had blurred, and suddenly the word launch didn't mean anything. I go into every game that I review wanting to like the game, and X Rebirth was a game that I could not bring myself to like, no matter how hard I tried. But no one in the comment section was having a debate over whether or not it was too soon to review it, because it was not an early access game. It did not set the bar low for its fans and give them excuses for its failures. In the state that it's in right now, early access is a red flag. It is an open admission that a game is going to be flawed. Maybe that is why the developer of Earth 2066 thought he could get away with deleting criticism of his game. Maybe that's why a game called Black Soul released on Steam to negative reviews and then reclassified itself as early access. Early access lowers the expectations and the standards of a game's audience, and it lowers the standards of games themselves. And that's why greater criticism of this sort of thing can help both developers and reviewers figure out what to do with it. Because right now, I don't think anyone really knows. It's a brand new concept. Out of almost 50 years of video games existing, early access has been a thing for six of those years. Books, movies, and music are rarely sold in incomplete forms, unless it's for the sake of some kind of experimental avant-garde thing. But for video games, this is becoming awfully common. It's starting to become the normal way to release a game, and what kind of message does that send about games? If we are going to be reviewing early access games with a greater deal of scrutiny, it still needs to be done respectfully. Review obsolescence is going to be a bigger problem there, so it needs to be written with an understanding that the game is a work in progress and is going to change, and it needs to be updated and rewritten when the game is launched to reflect what's changed. And that new review should be done by a different writer than the one who did the early access review, but more than all of that, it needs to be written to reflect what the buyer is paying money for right now. And that's why I don't think that the current crop of criticism really does the job. I think we need reviews here instead of criticism. I think we need something a bit less passionate, something that's written for the average consumer instead of the developers or the superfans. I think we need something unaware of the hype that these things create. And it's got to be something with a number, because a number is what attracts the attention of that average consumer. Early Access was not really intended to sell copies at a mainstream level. It was designed as a way for the most hardcore of fans to satisfy their craving for an upcoming game when they wanted it most. It was intended to get the most invested fans to contribute something towards the final product for the rest of us to enjoy. And that is a beautiful concept. But that's not really how it turned out. Early Access games have been the best sellers on Steam for a long time over the past 12 months. The temptation of exclusivity, the mystique of having something you're not supposed to have, and the raw power of appealing game designs won over mainstream consumers more than it did the hardcore. But playing a game before it's ready really kills the hype and the fun of a game. Although I refuse on an ethical level to pay for 95% of the early access games out there, on a more artistic level I don't want to spoil the fresh experience of a new game by spending my precious first impressions on it on an inferior version. That can really color your experience of a product. Like any other business, games are a sausage factory. Knowing the problems, the compromises, and the shortcuts that developers deal with ends up spoiling the wonderful illusion of brilliance that great games have. But those of us who report on the world of video games kind of have to spoil it for ourselves. It comes with the job, and the professional traditions, expectations, guidelines, and values that this job holds seems to overwhelmingly support a push towards reviewing early access games. Back in 2012, before the official Steam Early Access program began, Town sold about 200,000 copies of an unfinished version through Greenlight during its first year. While a large AAA team would easily consider that a failure, 200,000 copies of a $15 game was more than enough to satisfy the three or four people working on it. But their popularity peaked as negative user reviews poured in, and updates slowed to a crawl in 2013. In February of 2014, the original developer ceased work on the project, and turned it over to someone new who wasn't given a large enough cut of its sales revenue to support himself on it. With sales slowing down and popularity having peaked years ago, the burnout facing the original developers had led to neglect, which eventually led to the abandonment of its 200,000 paying customers. 
That is power, and journalism is an independent monitor of power. Steam does not yet have real checks and balances for the power that these popular flash-in-the-pan early access games have, but people who are fans of video games do. It's uh, people like myself, it's the media, it's the critical reception surrounding a game's launch. That is what helps protect consumers from wasting their money on sketchy products. Of the seven values of newsworthiness, early access reviews are stories that have impact, timeliness, prominence, and currency. If it's a negative review, then it has an element of conflict. If it's a rags-to-riches story, it has a human interest angle to it. If it's a weird experimental game that was only made possible through early access, then there's an element of the bizarre to it. Early access reviews directly address six of the ten elements of journalism. They are a way to freely find out a certain degree of truth about a product behind the developer's own expensive marketing. They are written for consumers and no one else. They maintain an independence from the people making the product. They function as an independent monitor of the power that these games hold over your spending money, and they provide a forum for public criticism and compromise. They expose the smaller games that need exposure, and they serve as a watchdog for the bigger games. And I have a feeling that if these websites were doing early access reviews in 2012, this whole town's fiasco might not have happened. These games are not complete products, but they are being sold like complete products, and when there's no telling that they ever will be complete products, all you can fairly judge is the experience that you get right now. But how do you fairly judge that in a way that respects both the developers and the customers? But in order to effectively get the word out and protect consumers, these things are probably going to have to be written for a wider audience and have some kind of score. They can't be wishy-washy, they have to be hard. A lot of people's money is on the line here, and they need qualified, opinionated reviews to know if the game, its potential, and the potential of the team are all worth it. Ultimately, it's going to be up to journalists of far bigger publications than mine to figure out how these decisions are going to work in the real world. But until then, I wanted to leave us with a quote from a journalist far more accomplished, experienced, and influential than all of us. For some reason, I feel like this is very applicable to the topic at hand.